All right, so in between videos, I drew in station 10 plus 030, as you can see. And these, I think, are 10 meters apart, but I want to check just by measuring the distance. I'll just check that right there. Yep, that is 10 meters, so that's good. Now let's use the box selection. Take all of 10 plus 030 and use the move tool. Whoops happening there. Have it move. All right, good. And I'll pick there. And then I'm just going to switch to the right side. Maximize that. And now you can see here I am. I'm going to go in this direction. See if I'm looking at the right side. Now I want to go left. Right, I guess. Anyway, 10 meters apart. So I'll type in 10 for the X. And then I want to go down 10 as well. Left click, and hopefully that worked. I'll switch back to the other view, the front view. And yeah, they look like they're lined right up, aren't they? That's good. So I can clear the selection, and I'll switch to isometric view. We'll take a look at that. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And then I think I'll shut off the uh, working grid and make it a little clearer to see and zoom in a little bit because what we're going to do now is try to connect these together. All right. So let's just start with the blue ones and we'll go down to the tool that's called Loft. Loft Surface. And I'll left click right there in the corner of the pavement. You'll see the arrow there. And again, about the same spot. And then if I look at the lower left part of the screen, it says accept reject. I hit left click one more time, and there it is. So that should be my pavement. I think it switched to white because I had... Uh, I'll just undo it and redo it again. Make sure I have it in the right level and color. Loft surface, left click, left click, left click, left click. There it is. All right, that's good. Let's try uh, one of the shoulders. That works. Good so far. And then we can do this one here. All right. Notice those two arrows, though, going in opposite directions. That's going to be a mess. When I left click, it twists. That's not what we want, is it? Uh, Control Z. Try it without force start. I went up. Well, that's not going to work either. If you keep left clicking on the element sometimes it'll move the arrows it's kind of funny that way you can move it around say oh yep how about on that side move this over a little bit how did I end up getting two of no, that didn't work did it I gotta zoom in a little bit it's doing it to itself no. This can be a little funky. Let's try forcing it to start at that lower left point. And I might be able to get it to go in a different direction. I got it going down there from that upper left hand corner. A little more. Come on, get to top out some down. I get down from there, that might work. It's a little better. Yeah. Still a little bit twisted. Uh, they kind of one way around this if you if you end up in trouble. What happens is it's the way the element was drawn. So let's undo that loft. Switch back to front view and take a look at these. So it's these two rectangles right here, right? On the left hand side. What we can do is redraw over 
one or both of them. And the way I've done that in the past is you take the uh, change elephant attributes, have a temporary level, I think I had a temporary level, put that one on a temporary level, then redraw it. So I just need my smart line tool. I'm going to start this time, left click there. So I'm just tracing over it. Okay. I'll trace that over. So now I've got two of them right there. And then I can use the selection tool to select everything in the temporary level and delete it. So now I should have just one left. Maybe now it'll loft well. You can do it in this view too if you want. Now see, that's much better. I started at the same point and drew it in clockwise direction. And now it lofts in beautifully. Alright, so I'll live on the edge here and see if I can get the, the aggregate sub-base level to work. I went straight up. That's going to go sideways. All right, let's try this again. Got to go to the left. You notice it kind of goes along the element. And that's going to go. One's going clockwise. One's going counterclockwise. You can see it's going to be a mess. So Control Z. It looks like I'm going to have to redraw uh, at least one of these to make that work. So. Same thing, we can move it, too, to start with, too. That may make it easier. It's hard, f at least for my old eyes, to see this thing. So I'm just going to grab that and move it down. Actually, I hit O first. I haven't unlocked the origin yet, either. I'm going to move down, like, two meters. And then I'll redraw it and put it back. That, that should work out all right. But I'll give you a break while I go around and do that. So I think I got it, and I was very careful to draw starting at the lower left-hand corner and then hitting each segment uh, and then going across the slope of the, of the road, make sure I hit just the corners where it changed, and I did both of them exactly the same. So I had the same number of points all the way around clockwise starting at the same point. Now I think this will work, uh, but i got to do a move. Put this back up where it belongs. Let's see, I gotta do the O. I should probably do the GS, go to settings, and shut the floating origin back off. That might help moving things around. And then I gotta go up two meters, right? Close that. Up two meters. That should line it back up. And okay. Okay, I can get that right. Let's look at the isometric. Yeah, it looks about right, doesn't it? And I'll see how it works. Loft. And I'll start over here, and that's going vertical from that point. That isn't vertical. Maybe I can get there. Yep, there it is. That looks really nice. Beautiful. So now these things are surfaces. Really, they're just shells, if you will. Uh, to turn them into actual solids, we've got to use one more tool, and that is the Convert to Solid tool. And I think I'll use the Smart Solid. And let's get the right color. And try the try the pavement level here. And then one more data to get it. it looks like it might have worked. Well, funny looking, but we'll try it. Maybe I'll switch the view to from wireframe to a a uh, illustration. Yeah, okay. So that's blue, the way you'd expect it to be. Notice that you know, as surfaces, they're hollow, where the blue uh, pavement level is solid. So now let's go ahead and see if we can use the tool with the illustration mode. Take that one. Yep, that one. The sub base. It looks like I forgot to do the curbs and the other pavement levels, so I have to go back and do those. 